Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya lassana. Hayya lassana. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters in Islam Today our khutbah is about continuous deeds. This is a reminder for ourselves that we make sure we have some righteous deeds but that we continue upon them. Whether they be large or small, that we continue upon them for the rest of our lives. In Sahih Bukhari and Muslim narrated from Aisha radiallahu anha, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ahabbu al-a'mali ila Allah ta'ala Adwamuha wa in qal. The Prophet said the most beloved deeds, and the scholars say that also means the most accepted deeds. So these these are the deeds that are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those are the ones that are continuous, the deeds that you will continue to do, and even if it's little, wa in qal, even if it's little, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would far more appreciate and accept and love a deed from you if it's little. Someone prays only half an hour of Qiyam before Fajr, but they continue to do that for the rest of their life. That is more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal than a person who does four hours a night for a month and then he stops for two years. Then he gets excited again and he does a tremendous amount of hours per night but just for a few weeks or months, and then he stops again. Continuous, even if it's little. Qal al-Rawi, the narrator of the hadith, after he narrated the statement of the Prophet ﷺ from Aisha, then he describes Aisha radiallahu anha herself. He says, وَكَانَتْ عَائِشَةُ إِذَا عَمِلَتَ الْعَمَلْ لَزِمَتْهُ And then he says, and Aisha, whenever she would do a good deed or a deed, she would maintain it. She would continue to do that good deed. 
We see this also in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicating this. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna Allah yuhibbu al-tawwabin wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. Indeed, Allah loves those who, tawwabin, they constantly repent. They're continuous upon that. And He loves those who constantly purify, purify themselves. Likewise, in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal says in this verse, and those who struggle and strive on our path for our cause, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will guide them to our ways. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who do good. In Surah Al-Ma'arij, Allah Azza wa Jal says, الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ دَائِمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the righteous, those who pray, but He didn't just say they pray, but they're continuous upon their prayer. They maintain their prayer. Likewise in the same surah, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ And those who guard their prayers, أُولَٰئِكَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ مُكْرَمُونَ What's the result? They will be honored in high levels of Al-Jannah. Likewise in surah Al-Mu'minun, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ and those who guard their prayers, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ They are the ones who will inherit. الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسَ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Those who will inherit. What will they inherit? They will inherit the highest level of Jannah, Al-Firdaus, and in it they will abide forever. So we see it from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. We see the Qur'an indicating those who continue upon righteous deeds we see it in Hadi al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the guidance of al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In Sahih Muslim, Aisha radiallahu anha says, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ida amila al amalan athbatahu. Athbatahu, yani, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he would do a deed, meaning a good deed, he will maintain it. He would make it something constant. Wa kana ida nama min al layl, aw marid. And she said, and if he would sleep from the night or if he fell ill, meaning he couldn't wake up to pray because he fell asleep or he fell ill. Salla min al nahari thinte ashrata raka. He would pray during the day ten rak'at. So even if he missed it at night for illness or for any reason, he would make it up during the day. That's from continue the continuity of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That even if he missed it at its if it's at its prescribed time, he would make it up during the day. Also in Sahih Muslim, Aisha radiallahu anha mentions, وَكَانَ النَّبِيُّ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا صَلَّى صَلَاةً أَحَبَّ أَنْ يُدَاوِمَ عَلَيْهَا And she said, and the, prophet, and the Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he loved that if he did a good deed, that he will continue upon it. Or if he prayed a prayer, he would continue upon that prayer. And we have a lot of evidence in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, Masruq, the companion, radiallahu anhu, he says, I asked Aisha, أَيُّ الْعَمَلِ كَانَ أَحَبَّهِ إِلَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. I asked Aisha, what of the deeds was most beloved to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم? And what's interesting from this question, you would expect, you would expect that the answer will be a type of good deed. Qiyam, fasting, sadaqa. So even though he was asking what types of deeds were most beloved to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, the answer wasn't that. Aisha radiallahu anha qalat, ad-da'im, ad-da'im, whatever is continuous. So it doesn't matter what the good deed is. If it's fasting, as long as it's continuous. If it's sadaqah, as long as it's continuous. If it's prayer at night, as long as it's continuous. In Sahih Muslim, she said, كَانَ عَمَلُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ دِيمَةً the actions of the Prophet ﷺ, meaning the righteous deeds of the Prophet ﷺ, were dimatan, they were continuous. And we see that in the lives of his followers and his companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'een. The Prophet ﷺ, first of all, used to encourage them to be continuous in their actions. In Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he said, the Prophet ﷺ, qala li, the Prophet ﷺ said to me, Ya Abdullah, لا تكن مثل فلان كان يقوم الليل فترك قيام الليل. He says, Ya Abdullah. And Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he was later on known as one of the Abadila, meaning the four Abdullahs. They, they used to consider them 
the major scholars of the time. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said to me, O oh Abdullah, don't be like so and so. He used to pray the night and then he stopped the night prayer. In Sunan al-Nasai, there is a, a, a woman by the name of Rumaytha bint Hakim. And she was with Aisha radiallahu anha. So she says, so Aisha radiallahu anha prayed eight rak'at. Then she turned to her. She turned to Rumaytha. And she struck her thighs and said, Ya Rumaytha, ra'aytu Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yusalliha. She said, Ya Rumaytha, I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praying these prayers that I just finished, the eight rak'at. She says, walaw nushira li abawai ala tarkiha ma taraktuha. She said, and if my parents were resurrected to tell me to leave it or to stop this prayer, I would not leave it. Because they were raised and nurtured upon this, that they are continuous upon the actions, upon the good deeds. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, in a narration, he was 14 years old when he saw a dream and he tried to get the Prophet sallallahu to interpret it. And there were too many people around him, so he went to the house of his sister Hafsa, the wife of the Prophet ﷺ, and he said, when the Prophet ﷺ comes here, tell him my dreams and get the interpretation. So when the Prophet ﷺ heard the dream, he just responded with a few short words. And Nabi ﷺ said, Ni'ma ar-rajulu abdullah law kana yusalli min al-layl. What an excellent man Abdullah would be if only he prayed from the night. Abdullah ibn Umar was about 14 years old when he heard these words from the Prophet ﷺ. Nafi ad-Daylami, who was the freed servant of Abdullah ibn Umar, and later on one of the great scholars from the Tabi'een, he said Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Umar never left that salah. And he lived to the age of 100. And he became blind at that age. And he became weak. And he would still pray that prayer, the night prayer. And he would, after each two rak'at, get tired and sleepy. And he had a container of water, and he would dip his hand in it, and he would wash his face, and he would continue to pray. This is from the continuity. This is from the companions and how they maintained and remained upon the good deeds. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, famously in the hadith where the Prophet wasallam, and the accurate word is negotiated with him on how much to fast, and how much to pray during the night. So the Prophet ﷺ tells him to fast three days out of the month. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, I can do more. And they kept increasing the amount and he kept saying, I can do more until they agreed upon the most beloved fast to Allah. And that is the fast of Nabiullah Dawood ﷺ. Kana yasum yawman wa yuftiru yawman. He used to fast one day and break fast the next, meaning every other day. So Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As remained upon that. And when he became an old man, that became difficult upon him. And he says, I wish I had taken the permission and the, yani the rukhsa, the allowance of the Prophet sallallahu the suggestion. I wish I took his suggestion and only fasted three days out of the month. But I took every other day. But he says, I don't want to break a deal that I made with the Prophet ﷺ, and he remained continuous upon it, even though it was difficult for him. So the question now, brothers and sisters, what would be the benefits of the acts of worship that you maintain and you're continuous upon for the rest of your life, whether they be big or small? The first and foremost is you get the love of Allah. Not that you love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the scholars say the bigger question and the bigger deal is the, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love you? Because everybody loves Allah azza wa jal. But uh, does Allah love you is the bigger question. In Sahih Bukhari, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna Allah qal, that indeed Allah has said, not in the Quran, but a Qudsi hadith, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَطَّهُ عَلَيْهِ that my servant will never draw near to me with anything more beloved than what I have made obligatory upon him. And in another narration, وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ And my servant will continue. And we see the continuity. We see him maintaining the good deeds. He says, and my servant will continue to draw nearer to me 
with the nawafil, the sunan, until I love him or I love them. So you gaining the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is greater than that? And we mentioned the verse earlier where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. Other evidence that you get the love of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah loves those who constantly repent. Not every now and then, but they're constantly returning and turning back to Allah Azza wa Jalla. So first we get the love of Allah Azza wa Jalla. The second is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be there for you to protect you, will be, will be familiar with you and you're familiar with him. This is based on the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he had him riding with him on his riding animal and then he says, Ya ghulam, ihfadillah yahfadk. He says, oh young man, he says, be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Ihfadillah tajidhu amamak. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him in front of you. Get to know Allah Azza wa at times of ease and he will know you at times of difficulty. Narrated by Ahmad and At-Tirmidhi. This hadith shows you, you have this constant relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when the time of difficulty comes, you will find ease faster than other people who did not have this established relationship. Next we have the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal from doing continuous deeds. In Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to the companions, أَرَأَيْتُمْ لَوْ أَنَّ نَهْرًا بِبَابِ أَحَدِكُمْ يَغْتَسِلُ فِيهِ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ خَمْسًا He said, what if one of you had a river right in front of the front door, right in front of your front door, and you would bathe and wash in it five times a day. مَا تَقُولُ ذَلِكَ يُبْقِي مِنْ دَرَنِهِ what would, you th- what would you say of any filth or dirt left on the body of that person? Someone who takes a shower five times a day. قَالُوا لَا يُبْقِي مِنْ دَرَنَهِ شَيْئًا They said they would not leave anything, any dirt on his body if he bathes five times a day. قَالَ فَذَلِكَ مِثْلُ الصَّلَوَاتِ الْخَمْسِ يَمْحُ اللَّهُ بِهِ الْخَطَايَا That that is, the Prophet ﷺ says, that analogy is like the five prayers and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases the sins with it. But it's constant. It's the five daily prayers. It's not two out of the five or three out of five. And it's every single day. So we see forgiveness of deeds. We also see that being continuous upon righteous deeds will prevent you from falling into sins and falling into bad deeds. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates, and this is narrated by Ahmad ibn, ibn Hibban, he narrates that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he said, "Inna fulanan yusalli bil-layl, fa'idha asbaha saraq." He says, "Ya Rasulullah, so and so he prays at night, but when he wakes up in the morning, he steals. He steals from people." So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam made it so short and so simple. "Qala inna hu sayyuh." The Prophet said that this person, inna hu. He will be prevented because of ma taqul, because of what you say. This person will, will stop what he's doing. He will stop stealing because of what you described of his continuous prayer at night or every, every night. In Surah Al-Ankabut, that's why Allah Azawajal says, Inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. Indeed, the salah will prevent illicit activities and reprehensible deeds. If you continue upon salah, the salah will prevent these deeds. And just like we saw in this hadith, that what you described will stop him from what he's doing. So we see that the continuous deeds, even if they're little, they're the most beloved of actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They're the way of his companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'een. This is the message of the Qur'an. With it, you will gain the love of Allah Azza wa Jal, meaning Allah will love you. You will become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will prevent bad deeds and it will remove sins. So there is a question, what if something prevents you? There's a deed that you perform every day or every night. What if something prevents you from doing it that one day or that one night? Prevents you from your regular Righteous acts, we will answer that question in the second khutbah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum min jami'a al-dhunub fa-staghfiruh fa-ya fawz al-mustaghfirin. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness. Indeed, 
those who ask for his forgiveness shall prosper. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-ameen Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Amma ba'd So someone has a good deed that they do regularly Or at a regular day of the week continuously or every night And we saw earlier that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam If he was sick at night Then he would pray them during the day And the scholars gave a number of examples similar to this you have a deed that you're always doing And then you missed it for whatever reason Even if you were busy or you were late So for example if Those of you who regularly pray Four rak'at sunnah before dhuhr And as a side note These four rak'at are two and two Not four continuous like dhuhr Two rak'at, you make your taslim Two rak'at So those who regularly play, pray Four rak'at before dhuhr what if you come and there's like 30 seconds to dhuhr? What do you do in this case? The scholars say you can pray them after dhuhr because there's something specific that prevented you from doing it. You didn't purposely delay it, but you didn't have enough time. In the same way, you did not pray the raghiba, the sunnah of fajr, which the Prophet said is better than the whole world and everything in it. So you regularly play, pray that. But when you entered the masjid, they're making the iqama. There's no time to pray it. The scholars say you can pray it after fajr. And these are exceptions. It's not the rule. In the same way, the Prophet ﷺ, if he ever missed fajr, he, uh, witr, if he ever missed witr prayer, the one rak'ah or the three rak'ah at night, he would make them up in the morning. And it only happened once or so in his lifetime. But the Prophet ﷺ would make it up. So they said you miss it for a legitimate reason. You can make it up at another point in time. So that's one way. Another, we have the narration from Abu Burda. This is in Sahih al-Bukhari. The companion Abu Burda radiallahu anhu. He says, I heard Abu Musa, this is Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, say many times, meaning I've heard Abu Musa al-Ash'ari say this many times, that the Prophet, that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say, إِذَا مَرِضَ الْعَبْدُ أَوْ سَافَرْ كُتِبَ لَهُ مِثْلُ مَا كَانَ يَعْمَلُ مُقِيمًا صَحِيحًا that if the servant of Allah falls ill or travels, goes on a journey, it will be written for him, whatever he used to do, whatever good deed he used to continuously do, will be written for him as if he were, in the case of the traveler, a resident. And in the case of the sick person, as if he is completely sahih, in good health and in good shape. It will be written for him as if he did it. Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, the great scholar, he comments, he says this, meaning the reward being written for the person because he can't do it, this is for the one who doesn't act and was prevented. And his intention, despite the obstruction or what came in his way, is that he would be continuous upon it. Yani his intention was that he was going to do it, but travel came in the way or illness came in the way, he will get the reward as if he is not traveling, as if he remained and did it, or he will get the reward as if he has perfect health and he wasn't sick. But even e easier and more merciful than that, brothers and sisters, what is narrated by Nasa'i, rahimahullah, that the Prophet وسلم, said, مَا مِنْ امْرِئٍ تَكُونُ لَهُ صَلَاةٌ بِاللَّيْلِ There is not a man, and this of course means a woman either, also. There is not a man or a woman that they have a regular prayer at night. فَغَلَبُهُ عَلَيْهَا النَّوْمِ And then sleep overpowers them. So it's not something urgent like travel. It's not illness, something serious. But that day they couldn't, or that night they couldn't wake up. فَغَلَبُهُ عَلَيْهَا النَّوْمِ إِلَّا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ أَجْرَ صَلَاتِهِ وَكَانَ نَوْمَهُ صَدَقَةً عَلَيْهِ Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write the reward of their prayer and their sleep will be like a sadaqah. Like a charity that they've given for the sake of Allah. That means another benefit of mudawama and being continuous upon righteous deeds is free reward. Even if the righteous act is missed, you will get the reward in full as if you performed it. 
But as we mentioned, you only get that benefit if this were a deed that is continuous in your life. We ask, with that, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who maintain and are continuous with our righteous deeds. And we ask Allah Azza wa to make us of those who recognize the truth as clear truth and follow the best of it. And to make us of those who recognize falsehood as clear falsehood and abstain from it. فاللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا اللهم أبرم لؤمة الإسلام أمرا رشدا يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويهدى فيه أهل معصيتك ويؤمر فيه بالمعروف وينهى فيه عن المنكر يا سميع الدعاء وصلى اللهم وبارك أنا مبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين